I've been talking to a lot of lawmakers today, and pretty much across the board, they want to do something about juvenile crime, but also in talking to these same people, it doesn't sound like there's a lot of consensus on how to hold kids accountable. But we begin our report tonight with the governor's comments earlier today about the budget. Maryland is facing a projected $760 million budget shortfall and potential billions of dollars in transportation cuts. But Governor Wes Moore says he's focusing on fiscal discipline, making sure tax dollars are being spent wisely, and that the bar to raise taxes and fees would be very, very high. Our economy for the past five years has not been growing. So I think we have to make sure that we can get our economy growing, but at the same time, not do it on the backs of working families. A major issue that many lawmakers are talking about this session is juvenile justice reform, but it's unclear what will happen. Some want to roll back reforms passed in 2022 that they say are making it harder to investigate juvenile crime, including specific criteria for interviewing minors. I think you'll go to every state's attorney in every county jurisdiction across the state and they'll all agree that the, the laws that we've set forth have been a hindrance to the accountability of our juveniles. But some say any changes to juvenile crime laws need to be evidence-based and data-driven. There are absolutely tweaks that we can make, but we have to make sure that we take a comprehensive look at our criminal justice system and not just be reactionary. Prince George's County State's Attorney Aisha Brayboy says she supports getting tougher on youth offenders and creating laws to address organized crime like carjackings. So we know it's not just kids wanting to joyride. That's not every case. And we want to go after every single person involved in the uh, carjackings and those who are benefiting from the crimes that we see on our streets. County Executive Angela Osubrook spoke to reporters about her legislative goals. She's asking for $125 million from the state. Her focus this year, getting $65 million to address disparities in access to health care in the county. We are short 1000 50 primary care physicians in about 450 beds, which means many Prince Georgians leave the county to get their health care. Everything from obstetrics care to heart care. We want to make sure that Prince Georgians don't have to leave this, the county um, to get basic health care. So we are looking at some pretty tight budget times ahead here in the state of Maryland. But as you could tell from the story and from the governor's comments, it doesn't seem to have much of an appetite to increase taxes and free fees, at least at this point. But we have to wait and see. Absolutely. Oh, Darcy, we understand that some lawmakers, they're putting forth what they're calling the decency agenda. Explain that for us. Yes, yeah, well, this was coming out from the House Speaker, Adrian Jones. Uh, who rep she represents the Baltimore County area. But she's saying that this decency agenda really deals with hate and bias incidents that have been on the increase here in the state of Maryland. Back in 2022, there were 465 incidents of hate and bias cases. That is uh, uh, the most in the last 10 years. So this is a package of legislation to deal with hate, bias, and prejudice here in the state of Maryland. Back to you. All right, Darcy Spencer covering it off for us in Annapolis. Thank you so much, Darcy.